over 50 years, the Hollister family of Los Angeles had been making the Hotel Del Coronado its summer home. And Jeff Hollister and his wife were carrying on the tradition. I'd met Hollister in the Navy during the war and seen him on occasion since. So there was nothing surprising in his phone call asking me to come to see him. There had been something puzzling about it. His voice had been urgent, anxious, fearful. I knew I wasn't making a social call. for coming. Uh, I see you again, Jeff. I wish it were under different circumstances. Oh, I, I don't think you know my secretary, Ann Chapman. It's Chapman. What's the trouble? It's Myra. She's been kidnapped. I received a letter about an hour ago, special delivery, demanding a $50,000 ransom or I'd never see Myra alive again. I'm just waiting instructions. Well, could I see the letter? Dan, what am I going to do? Well, the first thing you're going to do is notify the police and the FBI. But the note says... It... I know what the note says. Kidnapping is a felony, and we're not going to compound it by keeping quiet about it. At least I'm not. Meaning that if I don't go to the police, you will? I'll get my coat. And would you call Davis in Los Angeles and... Tell him to arrange for me to get $50,000 from the bank in Coronado? Yes, sir. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Adams. I make a call from my room. Well, Miss Chapman, could I ask you a question? You seemed very disapproving when I suggested bringing in the police. Did I? Well, maybe because I don't feel this is a case for the police. Why not? Do you know Myra Hollister? Only slightly. Well, I know her very well. It's a little hard for me to believe that when $50,000 is about to change hands, that Myra Hollister is just an innocent bystander. She's a souvenir of a slumming trip that Jeff Hollister took down in Old Town about five years ago. She was working in a Mexican cafe called the Alamo. And a week later, she married $5 million. It's a typical American success story. In other words, you don't like her very much. I don't like her at all. But if you think it's because I'm jealous or envious, Mr. Adams, you're wrong. She got exactly what was coming to her when she married Jeff Hollister. And now, if you'll excuse me. briefly what had happened and asked him to contact the FBI. in the event the kidnappers were watching Hollister's movements. Within the hour, Stark arrived with Special Agent Sprague of the San Diego FBI office. I turned over the ransom note as Hollister immediately emphasized that his one and only concern was his wife's safety. Well, that's our first concern too, Mr. Hollister. But unfortunately, it can't be our only concern. We also want the kidnappers. So there's one thing we insist upon doing. What's that? Listing the serial numbers of the currency you used for the payoff. No, absolutely not. Well, the serial numbers might be our only lead to the kidnappers, Mr. Hollis. That's your problem. I don't care about the kidnappers. Well, how are you going to feel if it turns out they're more than just kidnappers? What you mean is, if Myra's killed, it's a possibility we can't ignore, Mr. Hollister. I suppose you're right. But listing the serial numbers is as far as you go until after the payoff and Myra's released. 
I want your word. You've got it, Mr. Hollister. Well, that's about all we can do here. We better start with the money. Uh, well, I'll go to the bank with him. After the meeting with Sprague and Stark, Hollister and I drove to the bank. A draft on Hollister's Los Angeles bank was waiting. The money was withdrawn, the number on each bill was recorded, and Hollister and I returned to the hotel. Hollister had hiked at least 20 miles, and the secretary and I had worn out a deck of cards playing gin rummy. Sprague, what are you doing here? Have you had any calls from the newspapers or the wire services? No, why? Dan? Look at this. How the newspapers get a hold of this? from an anonymous telephone call, according to the story. But who? Oh, there's no way of telling, Mr. Hollister. The tip could have come from someone in the bank, or the police department, or your own company. One guess is as good as another. If anything happens to Myra because of that story... <sighs> tell Jeff I'll call him later. Before I had a chance to telephone Hollister, he appeared at my door with another special delivery letter. It ordered Hollister to be aboard an old sailing ship, the Star of India, with the money at noon. The ship, docked across the bay from Coronado, is now a floating maritime museum. The note warned that this would be Hollister's one and only chance to pay the ransom. If he failed to do so, his wife would be killed. But there was something wrong. It wasn't only that the first note had been neatly typed while the second was crawled in longhand. A difference in wording and spelling indicated that the two notes hadn't been written by the same person. What's the difference? How can we be sure it's phony? Well, I think I'd want to be sure one way or the other before I paid out $50,000. It's 20 of 12. We haven't got time to make sure of anything. Maybe we have. How? Do you trust me not to do anything to endanger Myra's life? Well. Yes, of course. All right, then let's go. Where? Star of India. Thank you. 
American Airlines, when is the next flight to Buenos Aires? Yeah, I'd like to make a reservation for one in the name of Nick Daggett. All right, put the phone down, Daggett. You're not going any place. Hey, what's the idea? Take your hands off, man. Ah, 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 cut it out, man. Who are you? What do you want? The name's Adams, a private investigator, and I want Myra Hollister. Now, where is she? I don't know. You listen to me, friend. Kidnapping's pretty serious business. I don't know anything about any kidnapping. You knew enough to pick up that money. So would anybody that had sense enough to read the papers. So that's your story. All you know is what you read in the papers, eh? No, no, no. The whole thing's a phony. Myra isn't any more kidnapped than you are. Look, Myra came in here the other night and she said she knew of a way to get money out of Hollister. Money for what? So she could leave him. She was sick and tired of Hollister and the society routine. But more than that, she was tired of Hollister and the way he treated her. How was that? He slapped her around like their marriage license was a bill of sale for a bongo drum. When he wasn't kicking her around, he was telling her how much he loved her. But if she ever tried to leave, he'd break both her legs. You seem to know a lot about it. Why shouldn't I? We weren't exactly strangers when she worked here, before she married Hollister. Then about a year ago, she started coming around here again, and we, well, you know. Go on. Well, she wanted me to cut out with her, and I thought all this talk about getting money out of Hollister was just a line she was feeding me, and until I read in the paper about her being kidnapped. And when you thought the kidnap was a phony, you decided to beat her to the payoff? Yeah. But you stay right here, Daggett. Don't even look like you want to go anyplace. Special Agent Sprague, please. Oh, this is Dan Adams. Message for me. What? How long ago? You see, no, there's no message. I'll be right in. I thought you said Myra Hollister staged this kidnapping. Yeah. But she certainly overacted. What do you mean? She's dead, beaten to death. They just found her body floating in the bay. police headquarters in Coronado, where Daggett told his story, after which he was booked on suspicion of kidnapping, homicide, and held for further questioning. Sprague and I returned to the Coronado Hotel, where Ann Chapman took the statement Sprague wanted from Hollister and me. While I had the feeling Daggett might have been telling the truth, the evidence against him was such that Sprague was inclined to wrap it up. Miss Chapman, would you please type up those statements for me? Certainly. Thank you.
If you'll excuse me, I'd like to lie down a little while. Sure. I'll send someone around for those statements. Oh, that won't be necessary. When Miss Chapman gets them typed up, I'll bring them over to your office. Well, fine. See you later, Dan. Okay. Startle you. Oh, are those the statements? Is there something I can do for you? You can answer a question. What about? A remark you made yesterday about Myra Hollister. You found it hard to believe that she was just an innocent bystander when $50,000 is about to change hands. Oh, what about it? Well, it seems to fit in so well with Nick Daggett's story that Myra's kidnapping was just a fake. Well, the fact that Myra has been murdered would indicate the kidnapping wasn't a fake, wouldn't it? Well, appearances can be deceiving. Oh. oh, what an original thought. Well, besides that, you gave me the impression that you don't like Jeff Hollister any more than you did Myra. Did I? Well, do you? Like Jeff Hollister? Well, let me put it this way. No. I'm just not fond of sadistic, self-righteous stuffed shirts in general. Then why do you work for him? Money, Mr. Adams. Three or four times more money than I can make anywhere else. You see, when a man likes to wipe his feet on people as much as Mr. Hollister does, he'll pay a big price for a good doormat. Now, if you'll just excuse oh, me, Oh, there's I'll... one other thing. While you were out, I took the liberty of going through your room. Well, did you find anything that interested you? Well, what I didn't find was more interesting. What was that? No typewriter. I've been using the typewriter in the hotel office. All right, Mr. Adams, the truth is the typewriter is in the water at the end of the hotel dock. You put it there? Yes. Why? Because when I first saw the ransom note, I realized it had been written on my portable. I didn't say anything about it because I didn't want to have anything to do with the whole thing. And what was that? A few hours before Myra disappeared, she asked me for my typewriter. She said she wanted to type some letters. She took it into her room, but it's none of my business. Just what is your business, Miss Chapman? The same as yours, Mr. Adams, and everybody else's, taking care of number one. In one more year, I'm going to have enough money to kiss Hollister and this rotten job goodbye. That's all I want. That's all I care about. And if Myra wants to take Jeff Hollister for $50,000 with a fake kidnapping, well, then that's their problem. All right, let's go in Hollister's suite and wait. Wait for what? Police and the FBI. When I didn't find that typewriter in here, I telephoned them. I think they might want to talk to you. Then this proves that Myra wasn't kidnapped at all. But if Daggett was in on it with her, why did he kill her? Doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Anne, why didn't you tell me you knew the note had been written on your typewriter? I told you why. No, Miss Chapman. You gave us a reason you'd like us to believe, but you haven't given us a real reason. What do you mean, Dan? I mean she wouldn't have kept quiet about that note and dumped the typewriter in the bay just to keep from getting involved in the troubles between you and Myra. Oh, she wanted to protect her job, all right. And to protect that, she had to protect you, Jeff. Protect me? She didn't get rid of that typewriter because she thought Myra had written that ransom note. It was because she was afraid you had. That's ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as thinking that Nick Daggett and Myra planned this kidnapping and then Daggett killed her before collecting the money. I think you killed Myra, Jeff. 
I think you killed her and then faked this kidnapping to cover up the murder. You're just guessing. It's a pretty good guess, isn't it? Too good, I'm afraid, Dad. Why'd you do it? Because you went back to the Cafe Alamo and Nick Daggett? The Alamo was her kind of place. With her kind of people, that's what she said. But she still liked my kind of money. She wanted $50,000 to keep quiet about how I'd gotten a couple of government contracts. And how did you get them? Doesn't matter. It wasn't exactly illegal, but if she'd talked about it, the contracts would have been canceled and I'd have been bankrupt. So that's what Myra meant when she told Daggett she knew how to get money out of you. I'd have paid her, too, if I'd been the end of it. But she'd have been back. There never would have been an end. What do you call this? We'll find out. Stay here, Dan. I have nothing to lose. Let's head him off on the roof. Just a question of money. Why didn't he pay her? Ah, uh, the money was just an excuse, not a reason. Everything might have been all right if Myra Hollister had done just one thing. Huh? What? Forgotten the Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> 